Chad, thank you so much for joining me today. It's great to be here. So could you please share a little bit about your background and what brought you to AWS? Uh, yeah, so um, uh, I've, I've been at AWS about 11 years. Um, you know, we've been doing, been doing uh, security and compliance ever since I've uh, started back in 2010. And, uh, you know, I came from EY where we did a lot of uh, security consulting, a lot of business continuity consulting, and um, that, that background was really good to help me doing what I am today, and that is, you know, security compliance for, uh, for AWS. So as, as the head of security assurance at AWS, what, what are some of your primary responsibilities? Well, our, our primary goal and mission is to help our customers move regulated and really sensitive data to the cloud. And that comes, a lot of things come along with that. You need to be able to prove internally that you've got, you've got your environment is secure. You also have to audit uh, AWS, make sure your supplier, AWS, is secure. And so that's where we come in, where we prove uh, through audits and certifications and other direct kind of audit engagements uh, that the, the things we're doing in the background, the things that the customers can't see, mm -hmm. is secure and, uh, and compliant with um, all the different kinds of regulations and certification standards that we, we adhere to. So you have internal teams, uh, internal compliance teams, making sure that AWS services meet a certain bar. I imagine you also work with external third-party auditors and, and regulators? Yeah, yeah, so that's most of our work is related to the external engagement, engagement with external auditors, uh, regulators, regulator examiners, and customers that are also performing audits on AWS, doing their own due diligence on us. Got it. So, you know, AWS is, is famous for being the largest startup that's out there. We, right. And we move very, very quickly and we get, release uh, products and features to customers as, as they ask for them or as soon as possible after that. Uh, I imagine in your world, you're looking at, you know, this control and that control and everything has to be perfect. How, how do we, and, and specifically your team, meet that need of still being able to move fast, but then meet the compliance and security assurance goals? Um, that's a great question uh, and one that uh, we constantly challenged on, you know, I mean, we, we definitely uh, want to keep and maintain that, uh, that culture of moving quickly, iterating quickly, releasing great uh, products to customers. Um, that sometimes goes at odds with what we're trying to do, and that is uh, make sure the processes are documented, the controls are documented, and that we have all the controls needed for big comprehensive you know, compliance frameworks like, you know, FedRAMP or ISO or, or others where, you know, they require a comprehensive, you know, control framework and processes that, that match what the industry expectations are on those, on those best practices. So uh, that, is a, that is a challenge uh, sometimes when what we're doing does not actually conform with what maybe traditionally uh, other companies might, might uh, be doing. But the great thing about, um, uh, working here and and being part of this team is that you know security is job zero and you know the reality is if you can get security right and you can invest in security and everybody's on the same page um, the rest of the compliance stuff is pretty straightforward I, I was going to say easy but I meant uh, it's pretty straightforward meaning um, we can go document we can we can kind of trail behind the um, what what everyone's doing and formalize the documentation, document the processes in ways that resonate with those, uh, with the auditors and with the regulators. Um, sometimes um, there's some things that we need to do and improve, and over time, that's as, as the auditors get deeper in what we're doing, we are uh, helping improve things as well. But primarily, like, because we have security nailed so, uh, so well internally, both from the tactical point and the leadership, you know, sponsorship point, uh, perspective, then it, it really does make it so uh, our job is pretty straightforward. But yes, we, we uh, our team also does a lot of um, things to help enable, you know, relieve the burden of the compliance processes and the audits okay. uh, from our service teams. We do that as much as we can. And as we do that, and as we get better at doing that, the more we can scale, the more we can do more, uh, more of these kinds of audits for more customers and more geos. I'm glad you brought that process up. Uh, many customers struggle 
you know, they have applications that they make available to their customers and they have to audit them. Um, sometimes that's a, you know, write the application, put it into production, and then the audit team takes a look at it and makes sure it meets whatever standard there is. Mm -hmm. I would imagine at the speed and scale that we operate that uh, there may be some automated artifacts that come from the development process itself within yep. AWS that helps everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's uh, that's one another uh, issue of uh, of things we have to we're challenged with as we scale is how much of the evidence can we gather uh, independently versus where we need to you know require some kind of engagement with the development teams to say we can't get this evidence ourselves we need you to provide the evidence for us or talk to the auditors for us. So our ability to provide services, the services to our customers, that are inter the internal developers, uh, uh, services such as you know doing the documentation, gathering the evidence, um, kind of making making sense or framing up what they're doing in and how the um, the auditors want to see it. Uh, that the the better we are at that, the more we can scale, the more we can expand our compliance frameworks to other different types of certifications, other different types of customers, and other geos. So do you have talent within your teams that actually writes code to help gather evidence, and do you develop your own programs to do that? Yeah, that's a good question, and that, that's that's a question that I often get from uh, from customers in that, like, how do, how do we structure the team in that regard for as far as how technical are we? Right. Um, you know, we do have a team, I do have an engineering team that does this. It's, uh, it's a kind of a, a control automation team mm -hmm. and a, uh, like a workflow uh, team that does uh, things like evidence, uh, you know, enablement for evidence collection and things like that. Um, it's really important that, that we have this team. It is really essential because we're, we're dealing in our organization with a bunch of developers and we need to be able to speak their language. We need to not only be able to speak their language but also we need to know what tools they use. We need to know, understand how they develop code, how they deploy code, how they secure that code, what they have to do to launch, what they have to do to operationalize their, their services, uh, updates, uh, things like that, you know, providing new services. We have to understand it in such depth that, um, that we, can, uh, we can then build tools that plug into how they work. And that's a, that's, I think it's a big key because a lot of times you'll see a compliance team or program with none of that understanding, right. and then they just kind of end up throwing over the wall a bunch of requirements with the compliance hammer of, hey, if we don't do this, we're going to be in trouble, um, uh, and and that really isn't like a good way to um, to really enable scale. It, it doesn't scale. It, it can be done that way, but that actually doesn't scale. The only way to scale is to be really embedded to, way, to the way that they work. Mm -hmm. And uh, and take that and enable uh, enable them to do their work just as they normally do without any any interference like compliance specific interference. Right. Um, uh, if if we're really successful at that, then that makes a very very scalable compliance program. That sounds a lot more collaborative than some of the stories that I hear where people avoid the compliance people altogether. Yeah, yeah. I imagine with this, uh, people don't avoid you in the coffee room or anything well, like that. Well, and, and that's, a, that's a good point. Like there are many times when um, the, the tech leaders will, will come seek me out to better understand what's required and, and kind of how they can help support me and my team uh, because of that, because they understand that this part of the business, the compliance angle, for us, AWS, it's, uh, it's absolutely essential uh, in order for our customers to use us for those regulated workloads. Otherwise, they, they just simply can't, and there's a big bit of our customer base we couldn't serve if we, were, if we weren't doing that. So they understand that, and they, they seek me out many times to help better coordinate a line and get resources and things to help, to help support their, their, their business. So Chad, you meet with a lot of customers and regulators and auditors. What trends are you seeing from those groups as far as how they look at cloud service providers and how they go about auditing them? You know, five years ago, I thought for sure it, by 2020, 
we are going to have a situation where auditors share evidence and we don't have to ask for evidence over and over. Right. Well, that hasn't materialized at all. <laughs> like, like if anything, they're backing away and saying, you know what, our evidence is our own. We need to subjectively uh, or objectively uh, take a look at your environment. We need to be able to um, draw our own conclusions. And if you gathered evidence for somebody else, we're not going to accept that. We needed our own testing and our own sampling. And so, um, uh, unfortunately, that's the case. So we have to get very, very good at generating evidence. And our evidence generation uh, capability has grown uh, to, to match that, but we're, we're still, I mean, we can always do better because it, it is a difficult part of it. But I would just say, overall, I would say people are getting smarter. They're, they're asking the right questions. They're asking deeper questions. And we, um, we are getting better at answering those um, just with all the experience we have with with these customer auditors and regulators and, and, uh, and external auditors. I, I, I would imagine exactly as, as you said, that as people are, you know, cloud is no longer a novelty, right? Right. It's, it's being used everywhere and by everyone. Therefore, people are getting a lot more experience with it so they know which questions to ask. Yeah. So um, I know, you know, we have some customer facing tools like AWS Artifact that allow yeah. customers to take a look at our third party attestations. Uh, is there anything else that you make available to regulators? Uh, you know, they may or may not be customers as well to help satisfy them um, yeah. as far as our controls go? Um, well, I would say that first off, uh, customers that are using AWS and they're validating their supply chain um, those those kind of audits are very different because we have to put in context what how they're using AWS um, with what we do behind the scenes that they can't you know observe, right. and so we have to, we help them with that, and it's a it's a it's a, a more straightforward conversation than a than a regulator that's not a user of AWS. Ah. They'll come in and they'll just be, start asking questions like based on how they think we're managing, we should be managing risk and things like that. It's, it's a, a bit more challenging than uh, because we don't have any context of their use to put it in, right? So, so um, when customers ask us, it's a really great partnership. We, they, they tell us how they're using AWS. They basically explain to us how they need to articulate their use and the supply chain of their use to the regulators, and so we'll, we can help them, and they, we can point them in the right directions. And there's a it's a very good and positive, uh, uh, you know, partnership there. Uh, regulators, it's just a little bit more uh, broad, right. and asking questions that don't uh, don't have that context. So it's just a it's just a different challenge. But we still like I think one of the one of the takeaways that um, we've taken away in the past couple of years, and that is to treat our auditors and our regulators and our customer auditors like real partners. Mm -hmm. And that's a that's that's something that, you know, like you said earlier in this interview, a lot of customers or a lot of people in general just don't want to deal with compliance. Regulators are here, oh no, right. like let's shut the doors, <laughs> everyone shh, don't say anything, you know. And that really creates uh, kind of barriers between the two organizations. And I think that those barriers exist everywhere, uh, especially, you know, you know, with big banks and their regulators, or healthcare companies and their regulators, it's mm -hmm. there's sometimes you know the the level of partnership varies. But we see with us and with our customers, those that have a true partnership with those examiners and auditors, um, it makes it so really they can help each other out because auditors um, and examiners are are you know their customers too. Really, even if they're not using AWS, their sure. customers they need to understand. They need to accomplish some things. And the, the more we're proactive about helping them accomplish what they need, the faster it goes and the better experience it is. So um, uh, we, we really have learned that lesson where, you know, being a true partner and really engaging with them in a positive way mm -hmm. is really the best way to go and probably the only way to scale any of this uh, in the future. So in, in that same vein, what kind of uh, mechanisms, training materials, education materials do you make available to regulators and third party auditors so they understand the cloud better and maybe how to audit it better? Uh, I think gone are the days where they come in and they don't know anything about the cloud. Okay. You know, I think back in 2012, uh, the, the GM of S3, you know, uh, was, was in an audit meeting and the, the auditors asked, what's S3? And then later he pulled me aside and said, why are they asking me these 
these right. very basic questions. And so uh, it, those days are gone. I mean, there's just so much material out there. Not only do we have like the Cloud Academy, uh, some materials that we've developed uh, that's uh, cloud agnostic training, mm -hmm. uh, as well as AWS specific tra training. Uh, there's like, there's tons of better training and knowledge and understanding of the cloud out there. So we're, we're not at square one anymore. We're at square two or maybe even three uh, when, by the time anybody comes in. So um, uh, we, we though, uh, we need to help keep, get, get those, ramp, those examiners and auditors ramped up. And we have internal materials that we have. We, we have something called the Digital Audit Symposium where it has a lot of the um, narratives and the control narratives and things and, and presentations by uh, by the control owners and mm -hmm. the, the GMs talking about how they operate their uh, operate their their service and in relation to the controls. So we have a lot of that stuff available, um, but it only goes so far because, like I said, the the whoever's coming in to do the audit will ask their own questions and dive deeper, and we. We have to we have to answer those on the fly in an interview kind of format, and that's just the, mm -hmm. kind of the standard in the industry. But we are getting better and better as we write more narratives because whenever we get asked a question about something very specific and deep, we will say we'll write a narrative on it, and so then the next person who asks us, we have a narrative ready, and and so they can like more easily read it and understand it. Chad, thank you so much for joining me today. It's great being here. Thanks, Mark.